Okay, part B. So the number of passengers the following Saturday was 28. And the standard deviation was 3.2. So standard deviation, I just use this little symbol. And I'm guessing that's your the mean number there, mean number of passengers. Yeah, the mean number of passengers. So that was on the Saturday. And we've already worked out that on the Monday, the mean number was 31 and the standard deviation was 2.6. So two valid comments. So for this one, you want to always start with on average. So on average, what do we think? Monday's got 31, Saturday's got 28. So on average, there are you know more passengers on a Monday than a Saturday, something like that. You know, on average, there's more um, passengers. I try to tie it into the question as much as possible. You know, you could say more number of passengers on the way to the airport or whatever. You know, more number of passengers um, on Saturday, or sorry, on Monday compared to Saturday. And you could put a little bracket if you wanted. You could say because 31 is greater than 28, just to compare the numbers, really show you what you're talking about. So this is your on average, you know, don't forget on average, and we're just comparing the, the numbers. So yeah, it looks like there's more people on a Monday than a Saturday, that's fine. This one's a little bit more confusing. The standard deviation here is smaller on a Monday. And what that means is, um, on a Monday, passenger numbers are more consistent. The smaller that standard deviation, 2.6 is less than 2, but the smaller the standard deviation, the more consistent your numbers are. So those six buses must have had a more consistent, you know, that the, they were closer to this average each time, whereas maybe on the Saturday, one bus was really full, one bus was really empty, something like that, okay? So more consistent if this number is smaller. And you're going to mark for each of those comments, but just make sure you tie into the question as much as possible. So don't just say this is bigger than this, but what is this number? It is the number of passengers on a bus. So on average, there are more passengers on the buses, you know, something like that. And you're going to mark for your consistency as well. So small standard deviation, more consistent. Here we go. So again, what kind of triangle is this? Doesn't look right angled. You're thinking it's going to be your, your trig again. It's going to be your sign rule or your cosine rule. So just go up and I'll just take a little copy of that again. We'll just stick that down on the side so that you can do the same, you know, go into your, um, you know, worksheet, whenever you see these questions and go, you know, go to the front and write it down and decide what you're going to use. So distance between F and Y is what we're finding. So I'm going to write that down. And if you go through the full question, you'll see that that's already on the drawing. That's fine. But what's not on the drawing is that the fishing boat travelled 3.4 kilometres on a bending of 47. So what we don't have in is that this is 47. Okay, so a bearing is just the distance from the north yeah, to the line that you're on. So that would be the bearing for that one. If this was, you know, then going in this direction, so say we're going that way, the bearing would be all the way around from north around to here. Okay? And this one, if we're going back to where we were at, there's north, so the bearing would be all the way around like that. Okay, so you face north, and it's how much have you have you turned round from north? Okay. So that's good. We've got that on there. The 5.7 is already on, so that's fine. On a bearing of 115 to the point of y, so the yacht travelled. Uh, so the fishing boat travelled that way, and the yacht's going this way. So the yacht's travelled on a bearing of 115. Okay, so that's 47, and I'm just going to put this in green because this is all the way around. That is 115. See the difference there? You're going from north to where you're going, north to where you're going. So that's the only thing that wasn't in the sketch. I can never put that out. And what can I do? Right away, should be thinking, right, if I know this angle and this angle, the difference is going to give me this angle in here. So I'll just do 115, take away 47. If I take away 7, need to borrow. So that'll give me 8. That'll be borrow again. 6 and 0. So 68 degrees is going to be this angle in here. So this is why this is a four marker. There's a wee bit of setup involved just to get you going. Okay? And your first mark is indeed for working out that 68 degrees. Okay? Now we need to pick, well, what um, what rule are we going to use, sine or cosine? Well, look, 1 
to three sides and I've got this angle in the middle. These two angles I can't use because they're not really in the triangle. You know, this is inside the triangle. This is kind of out with them. So that's the four bits of data I'm going to use. And that is your cosine rule because you've got three sides. Okay. So you're going to use this one here. So you're going to say that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared take away 2bc cos a. And all you need to know about these letters is that this has to be opposite this. When you're using this rule, if you're finding this length, which is your a, this is the angle opposite. Okay, that's the a in there. This could be b or c, it doesn't really matter. Just be consistent. But the a's are opposite each other. So my a squared, I'll call that just x squared, is equal to 3.4 squared plus 5.7 squared. Take away, put this all in a bracket, 2 times 3.4 times 5.7. Oh, don't close your bracket yet. Times cos of 68. And don't worry, sometimes this comes out as a negative, but it's fine. Uh, so once you've got that, you should be saying that x squared is equal to, is that, is it 29.53. And then don't forget to square root. So that'll be 5.4. And just use your, um, to use your, uh, what's called units, uh, kilometers. So amazing work, really. You're getting your first mark for this. You're then getting a mark for your substitution and then doing your calculation and you're actually going to mark for the square root as well because a lot of people get to here and forget that this is squared. Okay. So again, I think that's an excellent question. This is a wee bit trickier. And honestly, see if you just, you know, saw those two and knew you were working out this, just make up an angle. Just say I'm calling that 50 and crack on. You'll lose one mark for here, but you'll get the rest of them. Okay. So don't, don't get stuck. You know, do as much as you can. You, know, you should be thinking, look, the exam wants me to demonstrate the cosine rule here, so demonstrate the cosine rule. Yeah. Don't just say, well, I can't do it. So, yeah, um, hopefully the bearings chart, I know it's a terrible diagram, but hopefully the bearings chart here made a bit of sense. That was probably the trickiest bit. Three sides is the cosine rule. That's your big takeaway from that question. Okay, arcs and sectors. So, again, read the question. Everything seems to be marked on. The radius is marked on. The angle is marked on. And... Find the area of the shaded part of the segment. Oh, that's interesting. So we're working out just the shaded bit. So a little bit trickier, but okay. First of all, let's get the full sector. And we should know that a sector is pi r squared, which is the area of a circle, times our angle over 360 degrees. Now look at this, five marks. I mean, it's, it's, there's a bit in this, but still it's not a bad question. Pi times 14 squared, our angle we're looking at is 110 divided by 360. Okay, so if we do that on our calculator, we should come out with 188.146. And that's centimetres squared. Okay. So this is my full sector. Now, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get this bit in here. Okay, so if I, I can't really work that out. But what I can work out is this, and this is the triangle, isn't it? So then you're thinking, okay, well, what's the area of a triangle? Well, half base times height. Hmm, half base times height, I don't really know the base of the height. What I could also use is a half AB sine C. Yeah, that's a given to you in front of your booklet as well. So the A and the B are just 14. And don't forget with this, you need to make sure that angle is in the middle of the two lengths you use, hence ABC. You know, if that's A and B, then that's angle A and B, so yeah. And sine C is so that times sine of 110. That equals. So that's going to come out as 92.089 centimetres squared. And we'll just do the difference. So we'll do that one, take away that one. And that's going to come out as 96.056, something like that. Okay. That for five marks is absolutely excellent. I mean, Fantastic. So you're getting a mark for this angle in here, and then a mark for the answer. So there's two. A mark for this is three. And then actually just your strategy. I probably should have written this, take away this, but just for the strategy, you're getting a mark, and then your final answer, you're getting a mark. Excellent question. So that is given to you. That you do have to remember, but you should really know area of a circle times what was effectively a ratio. You know? um, so yeah, a great one for five, five marks.